I'm really excited to be here. Really, really excited. <laughs> just want to get my things ready. If you have a Bible, you can get it ready. If you don't have one, just go sit next to a Christian somewhere. <laughs> just joking. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I want to apologize before I start if I say something that is not appropriate or... Uh, English is also not my first language. I, in South Africa, we've got 23 languages. Um, so, yeah, so just understand Afrikaans is not, uh, English is not my first language. Um, just forgive me. Okay, if I say something, don't hold it back or against me. Okay, please. Um, Pastor Chris, it's such, such a privilege for me to be here. And I really want to thank you. Um, and uh, yes, like I said to you before the meeting, you're welcome to any time during the the it's a nice meeting. If you want me to do something, I'll do it. Okay. If you want me to jump, I'll jump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's a great pastor. We don't have many of those in the world. Just give him a hand. <laughs> yes. There's just so many things that's in my heart at this moment, and, and uh, it's so difficult uh, because the Lord speaks to me in Afrikaans, and I have to transfer it to English. So it's, uh, I've got a dictionary on my phone. I'm trying to get the right words and, and so on. But I saw this thing as I was on the plane, and the Lord said to me, um, and uh, if I transfer, translate this, this into English, um, the Lord is, the Spirit of God is breeding on this church and on its people. And I see very, very soon uh, there is something going to happen to this church and to its people. Not to just one person. Something is going to happen. I saw uh, on the plane that this, uh, this, this whole church seems to be pregnant. Everyone. Um, not just physic, physical, but spiritual. Um, you're very close to, to, to giving birth. Everyone, everyone. And this church as well. There's, God is about to do great things, great, great things in this church. And um, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. <laughs> This, uh, this, the beginning of this year, the Lord spoke to me, uh, I spoke to God about provision and so on. The Lord said to me, why don't you start to trust me um, with more than you can handle? Okay. What happened is I was in, in another country and the Lord spoke to me the evening. He said to me, um, he asked me this thing. He says to me, if you, if you ask me for something today and I don't give it to you, why do you think I'm going to give it to you tomorrow? Somebody asked me. So I was praying and thinking for the right answer. I said, okay, Lord, I got it. It's because I'm not ready for it now. So when I'm ready, then I'll receive it. And then the Lord said, said to me, Andre, do you think you'll ever be ready? I said, no. <laughs> and he said to me, why don't you start to trust me for now again? For now. 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 <laughs> You know, the enemy has, 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 has taken a lot of prophetic words and just moved it into the future. Yeah, right. It's like holding a carrot in front of you and saying, this is gonna, it's going to happen next week, right, yeah. next month, yeah. next year. Yeah. So you're living in, in faith and everything, but uh, it's, everything is in the future. But we need to start to trust God for now again, yeah. for this moment, for this moment. Yeah. So I thank God for the prophetic word or things that has, uh, he has been pouring into this church and to its people. But I come to declare that the time is now. The time, time is now for that to start to come into fulfillment and uh, for, for the fruit, for the trees to bear fruit, fruit to come out. So people can see that. So I want you to expect uh, uh, things to happen in the next couple of weeks. I want you to expect it. Expect something is going to happen, okay? Don't just uh, hope for it and think. Expect something to happen. Something is about to happen in your life. <laughs> Great things. The Lord showed me something about this church with unemployment. He said to me that, that there won't be one person in this church that will be unemployed. People will come into this church uh, unemployed and they'll be employed. And they come in. Things will start to happen and they'll get position. And the Lord said to me also that positions that the people in this church will hold will not be average positions. It will be high positions. That's his heart for the people, yeah. Okay? Amen. 
Let's start. I want to share with you a, a part of my testimony tonight so that you can just know where I come from and the path that I've been taking and, uh, and what, what happened in my life. So you have an idea where, where I come from and, and what the Lord's been doing in my life. Um, I've, uh, I've grown up in a, in a really spiritual home. Now, for the first 10 years of my life, my parents did not serve God. So uh, everything was allowed. <laughs> And then at the age of 10, my dad accepted God and our whole life changed, our house changed, everything changed. And I was introduced into religion. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus never came to earth to introduce us into a religion, but into a kingdom. And it's completely different the way the two operates. A religion has many kings, but a kingdom only has one. It's just one source, one place. So at the age of 10, I got introduced into religion. Now, uh, so suddenly there was a lot of rules and regulations. Um, now, my parents did not serve God for 10 years, so they tried to make up for that. Okay. So we went to church a lot. <laughs> suddenly, my parents were in church Mondays, they had prayer meeting, Tuesdays, they had something on Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. And I lost my relationship with my father because of church. Okay. Suddenly my parents were attending church so much that they were never home. And so as a, as a, as a child growing up into religion, uh, I got taught a lot of things. Now, one thing that always happened is I, I remember that we, we used to go to church and, and it's, I, I don't know what, how it works here and that, but my parents used to fight on the way to church. Okay. But our church had uh, the pillars at the entrance and, and when we entered, it was quiet in the car. Quiet. And they would go into church and they would greet everyone and they would be friendly. And as a child, I thought this is a good place for my parents to go. After the meeting, when we left, um, they continued to fight, write the same sentence where they stopped, same thing. And um, at our church, we had a, a big board up that said, um, the house of the Lord. So it's, as a child, it's easy, you know, the house of the Lord means if, if I've got a house in, in South Africa, it's Andre's house. So it means that Andre stays there. Yeah. So as a child, I saw the house of the Lord. So I thought, okay, that's where God stays, okay? We had a, a guy that worked at church. Um, he stayed close to the church, and um, after every service, he used to lock the doors and put a chain on, and his, his job was to make sure that God stays there until next Sunday. <laughs> so they got paid for that, okay? So Monday to Saturday, I can do whatever I want to because God's not aware of it. He's in the house of God. In his house. Yeah. And uh, so, so my life is there and, and, and God is there in the church. Um, and there's many things, you know. On Sundays, we, we had to dress nice and put on ties and everything. Why? I always ask my parents, why do I have to wear that stuff? Um, and it's because it's, we're going to go to the house of God. So I have to look nice before God. You know? yeah. Clean and everything. Um, we were <laughs> very poor, so I had the same suit for six years. Uh, I couldn't fit into that thing, but I had to wear it to look nice before God. Okay? Yeah. So, so that was my perception that I, that I grew into, and that, that's how I was introduced into religion. That's the house of God, and we go there to visit God and to look good. And we have to do our best. Now, religion taught me many, many things. Religion taught me that it's all about me and what I do. The more I pray, the closer I get to God. The more I fast, the closer I get to Him. The more um, everything is me, 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 me. And as I do all these things, I get closer to God. So I really tried my best, but from a child, uh, as, a, as a child, I struggled to do all these things, religious things. I couldn't pray as, as long as other people. It was very difficult to me. Now, I remember that I really tried as a child. I went to a prayer meeting at our church. Now, we were in a charismatic church, so... We had hours of prayer meetings. Um, I went to this prayer meeting when I was 12 years old. And um, now if you don't know what a prayer meeting is, um, they pray for an hour. So I went to this prayer meeting. And in the, the first five minutes, 
I prayed for everything and everyone and the whole world. <laughs> now there's 55 minutes left. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Start over or <laughs> something. So as a child, I walked out of this prayer meeting and I thought, no, I, I can't be a, a good Christian because I cannot pray as long as, as Christians pray. Um, my, my mother used to fast um, for, 30 and, for 30 days and 40 days, so I tried that, tried to fast. I remember the, the third meal that I missed. It felt like I'm going to die. <laughs> it was horrible. It was a, a really difficult experience. And again, I walked away from it and I thought, no, I can't pray as long as these people. I can't fast. Now, the third thing is, you know, spend time in the Bible. As a child, if I read by the Bible, I used to read the whole chapter, I would get to the bottom and not remember anything. Or I would fall asleep. <laughs> so again, I felt that I'm disqualified to have a relationship with God because I cannot do all these religious things. Um, my, we were, as I said, in a charismatic church, so we used to sing for hours. And as a child, I couldn't keep my hands up for hours. I got really tired. I asked my dad one day, when we get to heaven, what are we going to do? So he said, we're going to praise and worship God for all eternity. <laughs> so I said to him, I don't want to go then. <laughs> I can't even stand for 10 minutes now for all eternity. I have to stand like that. So this is, is religion, the religion that I was, was taught and, and uh, everything is on me and what I do. So I really tried my best, but I failed in all of it. And um, many things happened in my life, and we got to a stage where my parents, at the age of 16, they moved to, um, to another town, and it was in the middle of my school year. So I asked them to, to stay in the town where we are with family. So it was my decision to stay behind. My parents always says I must make that clear. They didn't leave me. So I wanted to stay there, uh, and I stayed with family. And my life just... You know, everything just started to fall apart. Um, decisions that I made and uh, really things that I did. Um, not things that, that someone else did. I made bad choices. And because of my bad choices, there were certain, certain responsibilities and things that started to happen. And one day, I was caught with everything at once, the same day. Everything. Um, it's not important what I did, and, uh, but just at, the, at one moment, everything was exposed in my life. So I got um, thrown out of school and a lot of things happened exactly on the same day. And on that day, I, I walked into my room and I was sitting in my room and I, and I felt that I disappointed the whole world and my parents and everyone and no one can believe in me. And I'm sitting there in the room at the age of 16 and um, thoughts of suicide started to come into my head. And I'm thinking of suicide. And I want you to understand tonight that, that we don't think about suicide. The human, the human instinct is to survive, to live. It's not to die. The enemy gives us that thoughts. It's not our thoughts. It's his thoughts. So these thoughts come into my mind. And uh, I'm thinking of, uh, of committing suicide because I, I don't have, I, I don't have uh, the courage to, to face people the next day. And um, now... The enemy reminds me of something. Two days before that, um, I, I walked away. As a rebellious young person, I walked away from the house, from the house decided I'm going to do my own thing at the age of 16. So I walked away, and then I got hungry. So I went back to the house. To the house. <laughs> and uh, came to the house, walked to the fridge, straight to the fridge, got some food, and went into my room. And I sat in my room, and I realized that no one knows that I walked away. They're not aware of it. Two days after that, I'm sitting in my room and I get these thoughts of suicide, and, which the enemy gives me. And, and he says to me that, you know, you are so useless because remember two days when you walked away from home, no one even realized or knew that you were gone. Now you want to commit suicide. No one will even know that you, you don't mean anything to anyone. And I'm sitting in my room and I remember the room started to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And suddenly God spoke to me. Yeah. <laughs> Lord said two things to me. First thing he said to me, he said, Andre, I'm proud of you. And at that moment, I said, Lord, how can you say that you are proud of me? Look where I'm sitting. In my, in my. Maybe a week before that, I would have believed it. But right now, this, in this moment, 
How can you say that you are proud of me? The second thing the Lord shared with me, he said, Andre, I believe in you. Now, it's, it's very interesting enough, in years after that, I started to, to understand, you know, God is omnipresent. If that wall is the beginning of time and that wall is the end of time, He is from the beginning, right through the middle to the end, at every moment, at every place. Okay, let me try to explain to you. So, God is, is at the day when I were born, right now, and at my death, the same moment. That's God. It's not the enemy. The enemy is not omnipresent. He can be at one place at one time. Okay. I, I consider it, I hear a lot of people say the enemy is attacking them and so on. Um, I, I consider you very lucky if the enemy attacks you. Okay. Because for the enemy to be, to be in America right now is a real celebration. For him to be in New York for him to be in this town. You know, there's like 4.6 billion people on earth. If he attacks you, you're, you're lucky. Really. <laughs> he isn't everywhere like God, same time, same place. He doesn't have that capability. People put the enemy and God on the same level. And he isn't close, he isn't close to God. So that day, when I was 16 years old, so it's a year about, God's standing there and he's telling me, Andre, I'm proud of you. Because right at that same moment, he's standing in my life when I, where I'm 31 years old today. And he's looking at this moment. And he says, Andre, I'm proud of you. We don't have that ability. And I'm looking at the age of 16. I'm looking at my life. And all that I see is that everything falls apart. There's no hope. There's no future. Now, the first time when I heard the voice of God in this way, it was, it was like someone gave water to me in the desert. When I heard his voice, I said, Lord, I can never live without this again. I have to have this. And out of my, my human or my religious ways, I said to God, I'll do anything to hear your voice. Anything. Just tell me what, what you want, because I want you to speak to me like you're speaking right now. Now, this was on a Tuesday. So it, it messed up my whole religious mind because I thought that God only speaks on Sundays. Okay? So here I'm at my house and God's speaking to me on a Tuesday and I, and, and I realized something is wrong. No one told me that God can, can speak to, to me directly. I always thought that a pastor goes and study to hear the voice of God. That's what they do. They have to go study for seven years or in South Africa they study for seven years to hear God's voice. That's what I thought. So now I'm sitting here and I'm just a normal person, young person, and I'm hearing God's voice. So out of my religious ways, I say immediately, Lord, just tell me what to do. I'll do anything, anything. <laughs> and the Lord says to me, Andre, you have to build a relationship with me. Now, I was serving God, you know, for five years, six years. I went to church every Sunday, every Sunday. Now I'm 16 years old and God says to me, you have, you have to get to know me better. And, and I, God really had to become a father to me, a father. And I accept him that, that day as a father, not as a, he's God to me, but, but he's more father to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And he had to come and he had to come and learn me everything from the beginning, yeah. from the beginning. Today, I don't, my, I have an earthly father. But I don't ask him for things. I ask God. That's God's position in my life. So I'm, I'm sitting in the room and, and I say, Lord, anything, any, any, anything. Just tell me. And the Lord had to come and explain it to me like a child. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, I've hidden these things from great men. But, yeah. but uh, in, Afri in, in Afrikaans, it's uh, open bar. Um, but I've opened it to children. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And... I'm sitting there, and the Lord says, we have to spend time together. I said, okay, Lord, you know, this is Tuesday, so do I have to wait for Sunday? And the Lord explained to me, I had a good friend that moment. He said to me, how did you become friends? I said, we spend time together. And the more you spend time together with someone, the relationship starts to grow. And the voice. Huh. Just think about that. You, there's people here that's married. The first day you got married or before, when you met that person, you didn't know their voice. 
But after you spend time with them and grow into a relationship, at the moment now they can come in at the back and call your name and you recognize the voice. It came through relationship. It came through you know, time that you spent with them. And I'm sitting there and the Lord says to me, Andre, you have to spend more time with me. I said, okay, how do, how do we do this? How does it work? And the Lord said, Andre, invite me into your life. Yes. Invite me into... Now, God doesn't force anything. Yes. Nothing. He'll wait until you allow Him to come into your marriage. Yeah. Your finances. <laughs> he wants us to invite Him, to give Him space to come and share and move in our lives, to accept Him. And now, as a young person, like I said, Lord, had to come and teach me and show me. So the Lord asked me, he said, Andre, what do you like to do for a relationship to grow? This is very important. Both parties must enjoy the time together. Okay? For a relationship to, to grow. If you have a best friend or girlfriend and you hate being with them, that relationship is not going to grow. Okay? Now... <laughs> In the church where I grew up in, people used to look at their watches a lot. If I invite you to have coffee with me, and we sit and we have coffee, and I look at the watch the whole time, yeah. how far will that relationship go? It's not in America, it's in South Africa. I'm not talking about America now, it's South Africa. Okay? Everything is limited, it's got to fit into a box. So, so every, both parties must enjoy the time. Now, as a child... Now it's much better, but as a child, honestly, I did not enjoy going to church. It was difficult for me. It was hard for me. It was, I couldn't, you know, I would rather stay at home. So the relationship was difficult to grow because I did not enjoy the time with God. Okay? So God comes to me at the age of 16. He says, Andre, invite me into your life so that we can grow a relationship. And I said, okay, Lord, how do I do this? And the Lord said to me, what do you like to do? And as a young person, I'm thinking about stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm naming a couple of things. The Lord said to me, Andre, I want to spend time with you. Anything, name anything that you like to do. Now, I love to go to the movies. I love it. I used to, <laughs> at, when I was 16, I used to uh, slip school or miss school, and I would go to the movies. <laughs> it's not good to do, so don't do it. That's what I used to do. <laughs> the Lord says to me, Andre, why don't you invite me to come with you? Yeah. I said, anything. I'll do anything. It'll help me to hear your voice. I'll do it. Next morning, uh, I went to a movie theater close to where we're staying. And um, I, I walk into this movie theater and, I, and I'm thinking, um, I'm trying to get my mind right that God is with me. Yeah. No, it's not me alone. He's with me right now. And I'm looking at all these different movies that's showing, and um, I'm seeing a specific movie that I really want to see, um, but it's rough. <laughs> My wife, will, she doesn't like movies like that. So, and I'm thinking, yes, that's nice. I really want to watch that movie. And the Lord speaks to me. He says, Andre, what are we going to watch today? So now I'm looking at a movie that's, you know, I see this kiddies movie right at the end. I said, Lord, let's watch that. And the Lord has never in my life rebuked me like that day. He says to me this. He says, Andre, stop trying to be holy. I know you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, religion taught me every time I get close to God, I must perform. Yeah. Yeah. I must look good. Yeah. I must do something to be more acceptable to Him. So that's, that's, that's our way. That's how we think and how we move. And right that moment, the Lord, um, he says to me, Andre, stop trying to be holy. I know you. I want to spend time with you. And, and he names the movie that I was thinking of. He says, I, I know you want to watch this. I want to watch this with you. And I go and I buy a ticket and I walk away and suddenly my heart just broke. And uh, I'm standing there and I, I say, Lord, what is happening with me? What, what's this that's happening inside my heart? And he says to me, Andre, you've already forgotten about me. I say, no, Lord, I, I'm aware of you. you. You're with me. He says, why did you only buy one ticket? So right at that moment, I'm thinking, you know, of, uh, of what to do. And I, and I say, Lord, doesn't the Bible say that we have to be good stewards of what we have? I don't have a lot of money. So isn't it a, a waste to buy another ticket? The Lord says to me, Andre, that's true. But don't you know that everything you had, 
you have now and will have in the future that it comes from me. I said, that's true. The <laughs> Lord says, she can buy another ticket. So I go and I, I buy another movie ticket, two tickets. And I'm turning around and I'm, I'm thinking about this. Now, no one has told me this. No one. There's no book. You can't go to a bookstore and, and read a book on how to go to the movies with God. No, I, can't phone, I can't phone my pastor and ask him, you know, how does it work? What are you allowed to do and not to do? My, my mother came out of a church that taught us that if you go to the movies, you go to hell. Yeah. Really, it's a church. So, so you can't even, I can't even tell, you know, tell uh, her pastor that I'm going to the movies with God. That's not allowed. So, um, normally I, I, um, I buy a lot of sweets and Coke and popcorn, and as I walk into the movie, um, this same brokenness comes upon me. And the Lord says to me, um, He says it this way, He says, when you are with your friends, do you always buy just for yourself? I say, no, God. I'll always buy for them as well. He says, why did you just now just buy one Coke and one popcorn for you? And I'm, I'm standing there and I'm thinking to myself, this is happening. This is reality. You know, this is really happening. God, God is busy. <laughs> There's a lot of people in Ethiopia that needs food and, and he's taking two hours off his day to be with me. Maybe I'll never ever get a chance like this. So, so I turn and I run back and I, and I buy double everything. Buy another Coke, another popcorn, I bet smart is about it. Now, I'm, I'm struggling to, to carry all of this stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, I wonder if he could just carry his own stuff at least. But I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I just thought about it. And I'm struggling to carry all of this stuff. And I'm going to the entrance, and, I, and I, uh, it feels to me that everybody looks at me. And, uh, and I'm thinking, if someone comes to me now and they ask me, what you're doing, what, what, what do I tell them? What do I, you know, I'm going to the movies with my imaginary friend, or what do I say? And I'm trying just to get to the, to, the, to the entrance, and I get to the entrance. Now I've got two separate tickets. So I give the tickets to the guy, and he says to me, where's the other person? Huh. I say to him, I don't know. <laughs> he starts to get mad at me, and, and I said to him, um, I really don't know how this works. I don't know if he's coming or if he's there yet. And I just give him the tickets, I go. I go sit in the movie and I put my Coke and my popcorn next to my chair and God's Coke and popcorn next to his chair. <laughs> and I'm waiting for the movie to start. And that's where I met God. I met him. <laughs> he changed and transformed my whole life in that hour and a half. I walked out that day, and this, this is what I want you to remember about this whole story, is I walked out of that that cinema that day with an awareness of God in my life. People ask me, how did you meet God? I, we had a meeting, I went to the movies with him, and he never went home again. That's <laughs> what happened. The evening, I got home, and, um, and I'm sitting in front of the TV, late at night, 12 o'clock at night, and um, in South Africa, you should not watch TV after 11. But I'm looking, watching TV after 11, and, and this, there's this Delilah 2 lady on TV. Do you have them here? Delilah, Delilah you have it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, this is nice. Wow. And the Lord speaks to me. He says, Andre, what are we watching? I said, Lord, you cannot see this stuff. <laughs> I put it, I put it off, <laughs> off right away. Religion has taught me that when I, when I enter a pub, that God waits outside because he doesn't mix with those people. So religion taught me. Religion taught me if, if I obey the laws of the country, if I drive 120, that's in South Africa, kilometers per hour, I'm, I'm in God's will. If I drive 140, I'm out of his will and the Spirit of God leaves me. At 160, Satan gets in the car. <laughs> At 180, he leaves as well. <laughs> That's what religion taught me. Religion taught us that, that when we sin, God waits around the corner. Huh? It's the absence of his presence. Now, think about this. If you have a child and you take that child to school tomorrow morning, 
and you stop and you park your car and that child is seven or eight years old and you go to school with him. And, that, and your child says, what are you doing? And you tell them, no, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna spend the whole day with you. And that child normally would ask you, please don't, please, <laughs> please go and work or something. He said, no, I'm gonna spend that whole day with you. <laughs> that whole day, that child is aware of your presence. And it's impossible or very difficult for them to do bad things because they're aware of you. The enemy is trying to, to take the awareness that we have of God away. To tell us that God is somewhere else busy with something bigger than what you're facing right now. So that we're not aware of his presence and he was there. Now there's two sides of it. If, if, you, if your child gets into any trouble that day, you're with him and he's also aware of your, you know, your, your bigness or your greatness that's with that child. So it's the other side of it. So suddenly, I'm just aware of God as he's with me constantly. Now, this is, uh, I, st- uh, I started to preach at the age of 16, 17 in South Africa. So I started to minister. I started to reach people and save people and go on and on and on for years. Then suddenly... Something happened. One morning I was driving to a town, and on my way to the town, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Andre, I want to speak with you. I said, Lord, it's a three, four-hour drive. Any, you can speak with me. The Lord said, no, I want your full attention. So I pulled off the road, and I stopped next to the road, and the Lord said to me this. He said, Andre, I missed the times that we go to the movies. Could we please do it again? And suddenly I realized that I've been in ministry I've been telling people about God. I've been preaching, but I haven't spent time with God. And I say, Lord, I'm so sorry. And I I phone the people. I cancel all my meetings, and I rush to a a movie theater. I get to the movie theater, and and the movie has already started. And um, normally I, I, I buy Coke and popcorn, but there's a place that sells food. So I run to the place. I buy food, and I ask the Lord, Lord, what would you like to eat? And if something comes in my spirit, I order it. I ran into the movie. So I go and I sit, sit in a movie and I, and I put God's food on his seat and I start to open his, his food. And when I open it, I smell it. And I'm thinking, I wonder if we could exchange food. <laughs> if I could have his food. And as I think it, he speaks to me. He says, Andre, I want to teach you something today. Five minutes ago, when you asked me for this, I knew what your desire is going to be in 10 minutes. I order it for you. You can have it. Okay? At that moment, I realized that if God is interested in what I eat, how much more is he interested in other areas of my life, other things? Today in my life, I, 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 it's fixed. I, um, I go to the movies with God once a week, once a month. Um, I go and eat out with God. I go to a restaurant. Whatever he wants to do, we do it. I go and I sit in a restaurant. I order two coffees and two breakfast meals. Um, you want to know? God's coffee, black, uh, black coffee, two sugar. Okay. <laughs> so he drinks it. Always, always when the food comes, the waiter would ask me, should they keep it warm until the other person arrives? I tell them, no, just, just put it there. Don't worry. Yeah. Put it there. That's how I spend time with God. And it helps me to be aware of his presence yeah. Yeah. that is with me. Amen. I can tell you many things that happened. A month ago, I've been going to the movies with God for years. It's what we do. It's how we spend time together. A month ago, I go to the movies and, um, and, and I buy two Cokes, two popcorns and everything. I go into the movie and I, and I speak to the Lord. I said to him, I said, Lord, don't you think I'm getting too old for this now? Don't you, is there not something else that we can do? Or, and I said, Lord... If, if you want me to continue to do this, just give me a sign. Just give me, just tell me that, that I need to do this. So I go sit in the movie. Now, normally I go early in the mornings when there's no one. So I sit in the movie, and uh, now it's not about the food. It's not, people always ask me, what do you do with the Coke and popcorn? It's not about that. It's not about it. It's about being with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about spending time with Him. Yeah. And so... So normally I take this stuff and I throw it away or I leave it. It's not about that. So I'm sitting in a movie and, and right after it, um, I'm, I'm cleaning everything and I pick up the Coke and popcorn that I put at God's chair. And both of it is half. And as I picked it up, 
the Lord speaks to me. He says, is this a good enough sign for you? I said to him a month ago, I said, God, I'll go to the movies with you until I'm 90. I'll do it for the rest of my life. The rest of my life. That is my relationship with God and, and for me to be in His presence. And I, I will not exchange that for anything. For nothing. Because this, that's where I, where I see Him. I read the scripture in, in Exodus um, 33 verse 11. It says that God would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. It's in the Bible. And when I read that, I said, God, I want this. This is what I want. I want to hear your voice clearly, clearly, clearly. I want you to speak to me face to face. As one would, it says, they, it doesn't say, and Moses spoke to God face to face as a friend. No. It says from his side, and God spoke to Moses face to face as one would speak to a friend. Amen. God created us for communion, for fellowship. That's why, we, that's why we're here. People have all these ideas and things, but from Genesis right through the Bible, it's God trying to restore a relationship. Yeah. So I whole thing. We have to understand in, when Adam and Eve sinned, or whatever you want to call it, at that moment, God came to visit them, and He asked them, where are you? Did He know what they did? Yes. But He didn't speak about it. He came in and He asked them, where are you? And they hid from them. Now, sin does not influence God's relationship with us. Sin influences our relationship with Him. Sin takes away our boldness. It, it makes us, it, it puts us in hide mode. <laughs> we want to run away from Him. We want to hide. And, and religion teaches us to run. Relationship <laughs> teaches us to, to go back to Him, to approach Him. That He's the only answer, the only one that can, re can restore. So that's how I heard God's voice and, and how the Lord has developed His voice in my life. And I can, I can tell you testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony. Um, uh, three months ago, um, I, I, I'm, I'm having lunch with God. And uh, I'm going into a restaurant and uh, there's right at the back there's a corner and it's quiet. So I'm sitting in this restaurant having lunch with God. Order two meals and, and two uh, coffees and I'm sitting. And there's a guy that walks into the restaurant he walks past the table and he looks at me and he continues. He comes back again and he looks at me and says, hi. So I say to him, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, <laughs> he walks past and he comes back a third time. He says to me, would you mind if I sit here? So I'm looking at this guy. He says to me, there's something with you here. What is this? There's something here. Now, this guy doesn't look, this is a very nice restaurant. He's not well-dressed or anything. And I'm looking at this guy. Suddenly, he starts to shout at the people in the restaurant. He turns around. He shouts at them. He says, why can you not see what is with this man? What's wrong with you? Now, so I'm looking at this guy. And, and suddenly, the Holy Spirit fills him right there. I, I, this is 2 o'clock in a restaurant. I grab a chair. <laughs> I sit in the chair. The Holy Spirit falls in. And uh, he opens his eyes. And uh, I haven't said anything. I'm having lunch. <laughs> I ask him, who are you? How did you get here? What happened now? He says to me that um, I'm, I was at a pub next door. I've been drinking the whole day. And I like to fight, he says. So... Um, just before a fight breaks out, something tells him to leave that place. And he leaves the pub. Something tells him to walk into this restaurant. He comes in. Something tells him to sit at my table. He says, why am I sitting here? I said to him, I'm just having lunch. <laughs> Got no idea why you're here. He says to me that there's something that's with you right now, and I've never seen this or experienced this. So I ask him, um, what do you do for a living? Who are you? What do you do for a living? He says to me, he kills people for a living. He takes out his phone. He shows me pictures. Now, this guy f has flown, in, flown into South Africa the morning, and he's going to another nation. Someone hired his, the army hires him to kill people. 
So he comes in, so he shows me all this picture of pictures of dead people. So I said to him, okay, just sit a little bit further from my table. And uh, I asked him, um, do you know God? And I, and, and I realized that he's got no idea of any religion or anything. So he says, no, he doesn't really know. His family is Catholic, but he doesn't. I say, I say to him, can I lead you to God? He says, please. So I said to him, okay, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And uh, I'm st- uh, I start to pray, but he keeps his eyes open. So I say to him, you've got to close your eyes. <laughs> but he doesn't. He just keeps on staring at me. I say, okay, it's okay. You can keep it open. <laughs> so I've got this beautiful prayer. So it goes like this. It says, Lord Jesus. So he says, he's prayed. He says, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I invite you into my life. And I pray that you would save me. Now, this is the intro of my whole prayer. So he says the whole thing. And I go on and I pray. When I say, I, I ask you to save me today, he stops praying. So I go on and I say, tell him, no, you've you got to pray the whole thing. It's nice. It's a beautiful prayer. <laughs> and when we get to the place where, where I say, um, would you please, uh, Lord Jesus, would you save me? He says he just did. He just saved me. <laughs> so finished is my prayer. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and so I'm sitting with him. This guy starts to prophesy to me. Starts to prophesy. Now, throughout this whole thing, he also drinks. He orders beer the whole time. So I asked the waiter, could I also please have a beer? This guy says, no, you're not allowed to drink. Because it's unfair. You can drink. Anyway, but he keeps on drinking and prophesying. And the Spirit of God fills him and everything. So... He starts to prophesy over my life, and um, he curses a lot also. But he starts to prophesy, but everything is... Exactly. He, he prophesies, and he says to me, what's this coming out of my mouth? So I tell him, just continue, just go on. <laughs> this whole thing happened in five minutes. Five minutes. In five minutes, <laughs> the Spirit of God filled him. We're sitting there, and, and I pick up these unforgiveness and, and things in his life, and, and I ask him, um, uh, he says to me about all those people he's, he's killed, he says to me, will God ever be able to forgive me for the things I've done? And right at that moment, the Lord shows me that he's got a son, four-year-old son. So I ask him, do you have a son? He says, yes. I say, where's his son? So he says, yes, he, he's been in a country somewhere, he's made uh, his girl pregnant, and he's got a boy. He's never seen him. The boy's four years old. Every month, he sends all his money to that boy. Okay? He's never seen him. So I ask him, how do you feel about that son? He says, I love him. I say, okay, uh, what if he, um, if he grows up and uh, do bad things? He says, no, no, it's still my boy. I love him. I say, what if he uses drugs? What then? He says, no, it's my boy. I would love him. I say, what if he kills people? says, it's my boy. I'll die for him. And I say to him, God feels exactly the same way about you. As I say it, he breaks into tears. And the love of God just fills him. He gets up and he apologizes <laughs> to everyone in the restaurant. He apologizes to everyone um, because he was screaming. He offered to pay the bill of the whole restaurant. <laughs> All the tables. He paid everything. And he left. Now, this one thing that happened, the Spirit of God spoke to him, but he responded to it. He responded. He was sitting in that pub. God spoke to him and told him to leave that place. And he left. There's two sides of it. God's speaking to us constantly, but we're not responding always. We're not acting. We're not doing what God is telling us. God wants to, God wants every one of us to hear his voice clearly. God wants to speak to you more than you want to speak to him. He really wants to speak to us. In Matthew 4 verse 4, it says that a man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. He compares it with food. So he's basically saying that if you eat three times a day, you should hear his voice three times a day. A Sunday service is not enough. We need more time with God. That's why people look like they do on Sundays. <laughs> they haven't been eating spiritual throughout the week. They're not communicating with God. They're not, they're not 
walking with Him. God has called us to walk with Him. Walk with Him, to be with Him. That's where relationships starts to grow and He starts to reveal to us deeper and deeper things. We, I look at the scripture where he, he speaks about David. He says, David is a man out of my own heart. But we don't read the end of it. The end of it says, because he will do anything that I tell him to do. He responds. He acts. So I say to God, Lord, um, you know, what, with prophecy and, and all that, um, I, would, uh, I saw someone that, that uh, prophesied years ago. And when I look at this guy that prophesies, I say to myself that, no, I must do this. I'll die if I don't do this. <laughs> I've got to do it. I desired prophecy with my whole heart. With everything, everything inside me. So I said, Lord, I'll, that's, I want it. I'll, I'll give up everything. I just want to prophesy. I just want to hear your voice. I just want to speak your voice. And this one morning, so God's been training me over years. And this one morning I got up and uh, the Lord says, okay, today I'm going to start to use you. And uh, we in a meeting and um, I'm, I'm busy ministering. And there's this lady that I see and God says, I've got a word for her. So I, I run to this lady. lady. But I didn't ask him what the word is. So on my way to her, I say to him, oh, what, 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 what should I say to her? So I get to her and the Lord says, I, wanna, I want you to tell her that I love her. And I stop. I said, Lord, come on. <laughs> Anyone can say that. <laughs> now give me something deeper. Give me an ID number or, you know, like <laughs> big things. I tried, I tried to convince God. I said to him, Lord, I'm, I've been serving you for a long time now. I'm ready for big things. So give all the small things to other people. <laughs> big things. I'm the guy. The Lord says, just tell her that. You said I can use you. I said, Lord, but I don't want to say, you know, God loves you. You know, it's, everybody says that. Just, and he keeps on, and I'm, and I'm considering it the whole time, and then eventually I go to this lady. I run now, is her name. So I stand, at, and I first cover for myself. Okay, so I tell her that I'm going to tell you something now, but if, if you don't feel it's for you, just forget about it. And don't think there's something wrong with me. Okay. It's, and then she says, what is it? And I say to her, God says he loves you. And as I tell her that, she falls to the ground. The power of God eats her. I see it work, so I stand there and I tell her, he loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. <laughs> and I want to be part of it. She gets up after uh, a while and I ask her, you know, I've said God loves you to many people but they didn't react this way. Um, what happened? She's standing there. She says that uh, we've been at a, at a conference and uh, she's been through a difficult situation, marriage and everything. And she's standing there and she, she decides to, right after the meeting, to go home and to commit suicide. Right there at the moment, she speaks to God and says, Lord, I'm not going to make it difficult for you. All that I ask is you that, that you send someone to tell me that you love me. That's all. To me, it's small. But to God, it's a big thing. I'm sharing this with you tonight because God's been speaking to you. He's been sharing many things in your life that you, when you hear it, you think it's small. But someone's life depends on it. There's someone else that's big. I'm sitting with this in South Africa, with this billionaire. I'm sitting in his office. And um, uh, spending time with him, I, I knew him when he was really poor, so <laughs> I went to visit him when he was now rich and famous. So I'm sitting with him in his office, and we, had a meet, we have a meeting, and we speak, and we pray together. Um, and the Lord says to me, give him 10 rand. Now, that's a dollar, one dollar. The Lord says to me, give him one dollar. I say, Lord, do you know who this guy is? This is a dollar. So God keeps on speaking to me. He says, bless him. Just give him a dollar. And I'm sitting in his office, and, and he's, a, he's a billionaire. <laughs> and uh, I'm hesitating all the whole time. And just before I left, I said to him, you know, I just want to bless you with a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so I give this 10 rand to him. When I, give it, uh, when I gave it to him, he burst into tears. He says, no one has ever given me anything. It's never given. He says, I've, I've sown, I've, I've done so many things for people, but no one has ever done anything to me. God restores him right that moment. God can take something that's really small. 
You know, people ask for crazy things. They really, <laughs> they, they, they pray and they say, Lord, if you love me, then let someone give me an ice cream. They do. You know? And then God tells you, buy them our ice cream, and you think, you know, you know it's in the middle of winter. It <laughs> doesn't make sense. Why should I do this? It's because people, they ask <laughs> weird things. I'm sharing this with you because God has one intention, and that is to pour out His Spirit on all people. All people. He wants to fill the whole earth. Yes, everyone. He wants everyone to hear his voice. Everyone to be in a relationship with him. And therefore he uses a lot of people. And he works through people. But there's one part to hear his voice. And the second part is to start to respond. I don't have to give you a new word tonight. I just have to try to get you to respond to the things that God has been speaking to you. I, I promise you, there's a lot of people that's here tonight and God's been speaking to you. It's amazing how confirmation works. Now, in, in South Africa, we have a disease. It's a horrible disease. Um, it's, um, there's a, it's bad. It's really bad. Okay? It's got a nice biological name in South Africa. But in English, that in South Africa, that name is confirmation. Okay. What does it mean? Confirmation means, you know, it's, it's, a, it's another religious word. If God tells you to do something, you tell him, confirm it. It's okay. And by grace. You know, people, God tells him, I want you to please that person with this. And then they ask, you know, if it was really you, Lord, uh, let, let a white dove fly past me. <laughs> and it happens. But when it happens, they ask confirmation for the, of the confirmation. So they say, no, no, no. Uh, it must have a green mark or something. And it constantly happens. But confirmation only keeps us busy so that we don't start to do what God told us to do. Faith lets us walk into what God said. Just step into it. Just <laughs> do it. I can tell you, I've got a, in, in our house, <laughs> if we don't use something, I sew it. Yeah. I promise you, my wife sometimes gets really mad. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things that just, just, it was there, now it's gone. <laughs> so, she, so she says, where is it? I said, we didn't use it for three months. We didn't touch it. Someone else needs it. No, there's someone else praying for something that you have and not using. It's crazy. They, they're shouting out to God and say, Lord, if you give this to me, then I know you, you God. And it's in your house. And you're not using it. So now as we sow it. If we don't use it, then what, so what's the reason? Sow it. Give it away. Let it work. Let it reach something. In God's kingdom, we are not only citizens. We have a position in His kingdom. The Bible says we are called a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's our position in His kingdom. There's one king. He is our source. He is our hope. He is everything. But in His kingdom, it's about other people. It's about what they need. About building them, encouraging them, and comforting them. That's His heart. When I invest in people, I'm busy with kingdom. What I'm doing here tonight is kingdom. <laughs> it's kingdom. And I'm here tonight and, and tomorrow and Sunday not to come and tell you something or give you a great sermon, but to impart something into your life. Yes. To impart, to put something in your life. And, um, you know, I want to take God's hand and your hand. I just want to connect it to you. Yeah. That's it. Because as soon as He touches you, you know, I've seen, learned. If He touches you, you can never be the same again. Yeah. It's impossible. But people touch a lot of other things. They don't touch God. They touch things that He touched, and there's still power. Something still happens. But when you touch the source, mm -hmm. yeah. something starts to happen. Something divine, something powerful. God is calling you to a face-to-face -face relationship. And that, that doesn't come in a group. Right. It comes when you spend time with Him alone. 
I want to encourage you tonight to invite God into your life, into finances, into your marriage, into, into so many areas. I spoke to my wife and I told her that there's no way that I can love her the way she deserves. It's impossible for me, but God can. And it's a vital part of our relationship for her to spend time with God. And for me as well. There's things that I need in my life that my wife will never be able to do. But God can do it. And the moment we invited him into our marriage, it's so easy. It's so easy to be with my wife because she's secure in God. It's so easy for her to be with me. I can be, you know, a lot of people call me prophet, but, they, but my wife says, them, come and stay with me for a week. <laughs> I can be difficult, but God fills that my need in my life. I can't think how any marriage should or can operate without God. Yeah. How do people do it? No idea. Finances. <laughs> <coughs> so, so I got this idea that I'm going like, to make a lot of money. I'm going to buy shares. Okay? So I'm busy saving up money, and I say to God, Lord, I've, I've, got, I've got no idea how shares work or anything. I'm going to save this money. I'm going to ask you. So I've got the newspaper and all the, the shares and everything is there. I said, Lord, I've got this money. You just tell me which one. I'm going to buy shares in that company. Okay. I've got no idea how it works. You just tell me. Yeah. So it took me, took me months and I've got this money. I say, okay, Lord, I open the newspaper. I said to him, which one? Just tell me. Anyone. I'm not going to listen to what people say or the world say. You tell me. And, I'll... and Lord says to me, I want you to sow all of that money. I thought it was Satan speaking to me or, you know. I said, Lord, I've, I've saved all this money for, for this reason, to buy shares and to trust you. And he says, I want you to sell it. And the Lord said to me, he said, Andre, he said this, he said, you cannot afford for me to buy physical shares if you don't have spiritual shares. I want you to sell all of it. I'm still, it's been years ago, I'm still receiving dividends from that money that I sowed. Mm -hmm. That's my relationship with God now, how I walk. Now, God wants to speak to you about things. He wants to share things, things to you. And it's not about going to the movies with God. There's, you've got a way of living. There's, there's things that you like to do. But I want to encourage you tonight to invite God into that. Whatever you do, ask him to be part of that. Ask him to speak with you. Don't worry. A lot of people, I teach people how to wait upon God. A lot of people sit and they ask God to speak with them, and then they hear nothing, and they say, this doesn't work. The world is fast today. Everything is instant. Quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> to have a relationship with God, it grows. In the beginning, I was, wasn't sure. In the beginning, I asked for confirmation. In the beginning, I, even prophecy. <laughs> I used to prophesy, in, uh, to prophesy to people, and uh, the only thing that comforted me was the fact that the chance that, you know, that I'm not, never ever going to see them again. You know? <laughs> but after things started coming to fulfillment and happened, today, I don't, I don't worry. I've... <laughs> I've preached to people that, oh, prophesied to, to a couple that it's medically impossible for them to have children. Impossible. They've been trying to have children for 10 years. They've tried everything. It's impossible. The only way is adoption. I speak to them and the Lord says they'll have children yeah. within nine months. Wow. But he didn't tell me the, you know, the old medical part behind it. So they said, you know, throughout the prophecy, I'm busy prophesying to this couple. They stopped me in the middle. They say, it's impossible. Yeah. We, love, we would love to take what, you, what you're saying tonight, but it's impossible. It's been 10 years. It doesn't frighten me anymore. <laughs> it doesn't frighten me. God <laughs> can do it. He can do it. We think it's, there's three flows of faith. I want you to understand this tonight. The one flow of faith is the person that prays, the second is the person that's being prayed for, and the third is the group. Yeah. Okay. That's true. You don't have to have faith.
to receive a prophecy. You don't, you don't have to have faith to, for the prophecy to come into fulfillment. People think when they get a prophecy that they should carry the word or the prophecy, but it's the other way around. The prophecy should carry you. It should hold you up. It will come into fulfillment. You must understand, when you get a prophecy, it's only God that's standing right at that place, right at that moment where it came into fulfillment and He's sharing it with you. It's not something that might happen when you pray enough or it's future. It's what God sees. It's what's going to happen. It's what's going to come into place. It will happen. Now, prophecy cannot replace God's voice in your life. It cannot replace that. I can minister to so many people, but God's got a word. I, I go into this meeting and uh, there's 100 people and I have to minister to a lot of them. And uh, I say, Lord, I'm praying for the town, for these people. And as I walk in, I say, Lord, give me a word for these people. God speaks to me. He says, I've got a word for this nation. His capacity <laughs> is so much bigger than our capacity, what we can contain. God wants to communicate, and prophecy will stir it up. The Lord spoke to me. He gave me one promise in my life. One thing He promised me. He said, wherever you go after that, people will hear my voice clearly. I know that everyone that's here, you'll start to hear God's voice clearly. You'll know when He speaks to you. You'll know it. You'll know it. you know it. But the second part is you have to respond. You have to move and do what he says. God wants to train us to hear his voice. And he'll start with small and easy steps. But that, <laughs> that's got great <laughs> effects. Great effects. Small things. There's this young boy. Um, he's not young. I, I, I was 16, 17. He was 21. So I walk past him and the Lord says to me, just give him a hug. And uh, in the moment, I'm just walking up, and I, I quickly grab and I give him a hug. I'm 16, he's 21. He says to me, his name's Christo. He says to me, Andre, you're like a father to me. I say to him, Christo, I'm 16. I can never be your father. <laughs> he says, Andre, no one has ever given me a hug. That's why I'm saying that you're like a father to me. It changed his life. Small thing. Small, small, basic, basic, basic things. God is constantly speaking, us, speaking to us to do things, to give things, to act in love. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, people are sometimes unsure in the way that God speaks. Now it's easy. I'm going to give you the rules. God, voice, God's voice builds, comforts, and encourages. The enemy's voice steals, destroys, and kills. So the God speaks to me and he tells me, Andre, jump off the bridge. Then I go and stand there and I test it. I'm thinking, okay, if I jump off here, does it build? No. Does it comfort? No. <laughs> so it's not God. <laughs> so I don't act on that. I don't. But today now, I don't test his voice anymore. I know his voice. Yeah. Doesn't the Bible say, he says, my sheep knows my voice. And they will not follow any other voice. The problem with the world today is they know the voice of the enemy better than the voice of God. People know exactly what they should not do. <laughs> but they don't know what, <laughs> what they should do. They give more credit to something than to God. They walk down the, the a street and then something tells them to go right. And I asked them, and I was, so what did you do? They said, no, I went left. And then what? They know something horrible happened. <laughs> Listen to God's voice when he speaks to you. Act, act on it. Pick it up. You know, we have to understand our spiritual authority that, that we have in our life. Um, when, uh, the, with the spirit of discernment, when you walk into a place and you pick up something negative, it's, um, I, I walk into the shopping center, and uh, when I walk into it, I pick up that there's a bomb inside the shopping center in my spirit. So I say, thank you, Lord, for the tip, and I start to run <laughs> to my car. So on my way to the car, the Lord speaks to me. He says, Andre, what are you doing? I said, Lord, I'm getting away from this place as quickly as possible. He says, no, go back. When, when we pick up something negative in our spirit, the moment we pick it up, God gives us authority over that. 
right at the moment. We already have the thought. That's why we picked it up. So God says, go back. So I go back. He says, I want you to, to speak over that thing. Now, this is a shopping center, so I can't shout and scream and tell people, you know, terrify them. So I just stand there and I say, thank you, Father. I take authority out over this thing and I command yes. peace over it. Yes. It's finished. Everything stops at that moment. Constantly, God gives us spirit of discernment to discern things, but we start to run. Yeah. Yeah. Respond. Yes. Yeah. We have to respond. We have to do things. And you can get very religious and call 10 people and start a prayer meeting and have communion. Or you can just say, in Jesus' name, I take control over this. Both works. Both of it. But just sometimes you, you're at the place where it's going to be difficult <laughs> to do all that. We need to take authority over things on earth. In a moment, just take authority over the situation. Okay? Amen.